All right. Um, so I'm going to try to, as always, do this as quickly as possible. Um, to begin with, I just want to remind you of what we have coming up. Of course, <clears throat> I believe I did this in the last video, but, well, we're not going to get into that. Um, you have two body paragraphs due next time. Uh, and we've uh, talked about the construction of body paragraphs, I feel like, fairly extensively this semester. Um, so the first part of this is just going to be the quickest of reviews. Uh, bear in mind, if you feel a little bit lost uh, during this section, you can always refer to your notes. Um, or I actually have a template on Corsten in the, um, uh, let me summon the name, and the syllabus and other helpful documents section. If you click on that, uh, there's a couple things there. There's a syllabus for one. Uh, there's a handout on commas. There's an MLA template. Uh, but there's also what I've called an analysis template, and that is the sort of breakdown we, we use for introductions, the breakdown we use for body paragraphs, the, the stuff we've been doing all semester. Um, I have it all written down in a little handout for you there. So if you still can't hang on to that information um, at this point in the semester, you can also refer to that document. It should help you. Okay. Jumping right in here, as I said, two body paragraphs. Where do we start when it comes to paragraph construction? Um, this would be the part in class where I would ask you that and you guys probably bum me out. Um, where do you think you start? Maybe a topic sentence, right? No, what's the problem with starting with a topic sentence? You have no idea what you wanna say, what you wanna talk about, right? How could you? Um, you haven't written anything yet. We need evidence. Um, what I've decided to use, and I chose this a, a little bit at random, if I'm being totally honest. Um, uh, when I do something like this, uh, a little extra uh, practice, I suppose, I like to try to pick a moment in a scene that I feel like you guys would gloss over. Um, and I wouldn't fault you for this one. It's really quick. Uh, you may not even, you may not recognize where this is from. Uh, the screenshot I've taken. By the way, I have to take a screenshot because YouTube will take this down if I show any video whatsoever from the film. So this is what we're working with. But what are we working with? First of all, this is very early in the movie. This is when McLean gets to the, uh, the building. He's gone up the elevator. Um, so we've talked to Argyle already. We've gotten off the plane. Uh, we, we've gone through the lobby and found out that Holly's using her maiden name, all that stuff. Like, that's about where we are. He's walking through this party he clearly doesn't belong at. Like, he tries champagne uh, a minute before this, kind of looks at the cup like, what is this? Like, he doesn't know how to deal with any of it, right? Almost, I would say almost in a farcical fashion because, again, he's not the kind of guy to drink champagne, uh, and, and this scene stresses that. But he would know what it is. You know, like, it's it's kind of silly. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's where we're at. Right after this moment, and we're not going to look at that, but again, just to tell you where we are, right after this moment in the movie, a guy, just a stranger, is going to walk up to him, kiss him on the cheek, and say Merry Christmas, and he's going to have that second California moment. He's California. Um, so what are we looking at? probably 30 seconds into the party he's had his champagne moment he's walking around he's feeling adrift he's feeling like he doesn't belong because he doesn't and he looks through this faux waterfall like this obviously not real waterfall that's like 60 stories up or whatever it is in LA he's looking through there and it's it's nicely framed here which is part of the reason I chose this particular screenshot because it kind of pans across but there's this moment right here where this woman and these two other people are framed by this fake ass waterfall this fake jungle to the left and it's it's a really interesting shot for one the whole setup is bananas right and that kind of intrigues me but two again look at like when you pause it right here look at how perfectly framed this is to me again that just screams intentionality. Like it just seems like they're going for something with this. Like this is just odd, you know? All right, so what do we do with it? That would be the next step. Um, as always, I'd like to remind you, 
if you pull evidence in your own, you know, scholarly travels and you don't know what to do with it, you know, try first. But after that, if all you can arrive at is a banal claim or not much of anything, you know, it's always possible that evidence didn't work out like you thought it might, in which case, try something else. You know, you don't have to uh, sort of try to take blood from a stone to borrow a cliche. Um, not everything's going to work. That's all good. Move on. Of course, I don't have that excuse. I've pulled this, and I'm going to try to do something with it for you. So let's see what we can do. Um, I've given you the context. Let's actually start there when it comes to just laying out our evidence and what it looks like in a paper. And uh, I think I have done all the formatting here. Let's uh, let's hope that's true. Okay, so what, McLean? Oh, sorry, I can't talk and type. Let me just type this. Um, Thanks, Google. All right, so already I want to underscore something real quick. I wasn't sure how to describe what we were looking at. Uh, notice um, we're not going to quote anything here because there's nothing being said. This is visual. So we got to figure out context, which is this first part, as McLean enters the party he notices a conversation. All that's pretty easy. That's what's happening. And then I kind of got into trouble. I was like, well, what are we even talking about? It's a fake waterfall, dead center, basically, of Holly's offices. I couldn't think of a better way to describe it. I mean, she is kind of in charge there. Uh, that's also where she works. I, uh, we don't get a name for it, so we kind of had to figure that out. But this is what's going on, right? He notices a conversation occurring behind this fake waterfall at the heart of Holly's offices. Now, that's not all we're describing. We gotta get more specific than that. If it's just people talking behind a waterfall, sorry, I'm gonna take a drink of something. If it's just people talking, again, uh, we don't give ourselves uh, much ammunition, right? So what else do we see? Well, I would say of the three people here, there's only one person we can see very well, right? It's this woman who's standing. She's also standing. The other two people are sitting. Uh, they're all seemingly engaged in a conversation, so so she's not set apart in that way, but she is kind of highlighted. She's also dead center, right? So maybe we could start to kind of argue that she's the focus of his gaze. Um, that's arguable, which is to say it's not definite, but I think you can make the argument that she's she's the focus. So let's do that as well. Um, so he notices a conversation, blah, blah, blah. Um, Is there anything else we want to say about this woman or about these people? Her hair is majestic. I just want to say that. Uh, like in a full-on 80s kind of way, uh, that is some real hair going on. Um, beyond that, you know, they got the, the kind of sunset behind them. I mean, honestly, to me, the thing that strikes me about this whole thing, it the whole moment is so weirdly perfect like I mean I know it's a movie and I know this is all constructed but I think that's what I'm getting at is even within the context of the movie this one moment it looks almost like a postcard right like you could almost see script somewhere wish you were here like that like it's perfect it's arguably too perfect perhaps right like like again I uh, the point I'm making here is I think 
what we could start to consider is just for a moment we're announcing uh, the fact that this is all made, that this is all fake. It doesn't hurt that it's in L.A. It doesn't hurt that McLean is always thinking about how this is California and all that stuff. Um, but it seems like some of that is going on here. So let's make sure we focus on that. This woman is set apart. Um, Good enough. Okay. So this is uh, about as long as I would probably recommend uh, you you go in terms of describing a scene. I say that because, again, you can't describe the whole scene. Uh, there's there's going to be elements we've left out of our description if you go back and look. Because, um, again, it's visual. There's a lot that we could describe. And we may bring in certain elements as we think about analysis. But for the initial setup... That's plenty long. We got some good details here. Um, and again, because you could really get into trouble just summarizing, summarizing, summarizing. You don't have that kind of time. So if this is our evidence, what's the next step? The next step is we got to focus on details. What seems important or significant? What could we potentially dig into, think about more? The things that leap out to me, I mean, McLean's gaze is interesting. Uh, he's the main character, if nothing else. Like, I mean, that's important. We could start there. Uh, and again, we're just kind of spitballing here. What's he looking at? Um, I mean, pretty clearly, again, we could argue he's looking at this woman. So, what? What, what, what could we start to argue here? Google would help me with that one. Uh, don't know if behavior is the word I want, but anyway, given his earlier behavior, maybe actions. Actions is better. Given his earlier actions. All right, so what am I gonna? What am I talking about here? His earlier interactions, we're thinking about the flight attendant who kind of checks him out. At least that's the way I see that moment. Um, and then right after that, the the young woman who leaps into that guy's arms uh, at the airport, he clearly checks her out. Um, but that's it, right? Um, so we have a pattern in the film, and we're kind of saying this is one more of those moments. Um, so what? Much like his earlier interactions with women, um, saying women a lot. Sorry, I just realized I got myself into trouble. Uh, his earnings are women. We're meant to notice. McLean notices. Notice. I don't, I'm not in love with this sentence, but notices. His ability to participate. Um in sexual what i mean again i don't love any of this phrasing but uh what we're trying to what we're kind of trying to say here is he's able to appreciate maybe that's better his ability to appreciate
I understand this sounds a little bit like a biology textbook, which is kind of gross, but that is kind of what's going on, right? Like if we're saying he's quote unquote checking these women out, that is what that is. That's that's more of a dictionary definition of it, but that's kind of the mode we're in. Okay. What we can't do, of course, is simply say this because it's banal. We're just we're finding another way to say that he's checking these women out. We would need to have more than that. But this is a start. Uh, the next question would be, and again, I'm sorry, I got to The next question would be why does the movie keep having uh, why does it keep having us notice or see the fact that McLean is noticing or seeing these women? That seems important. This is the second or third time it's occurred within the first 15 minutes of the movie. So what? Right? One avenue I would consider is, um, again, this way we're defining masculinity in the movie, uh, particularly with McLean, um, this seems to be an important element. Um, now, again, it's not just capital M masculinity. He's married. He's a father. He's a cop. He's all these things. So he's, he's a very uh, distinct form of masculinity, but this is part of it. Um, now, what does that mean? Well, I've said importantly as well. Uh, All right, so what did I just say there? Basically, because we're seeing it a lot, we know that it's a pattern, right? But then after that, I'm, I'm kind of connecting that element of him, the fact that he's checking women out, to the rest of the stuff he stands for, this masculinity that he quote-unquote espouses. Very fancy word. You look it up if you want. But okay, so we've built in some significance here by saying that it's more than just checking people out. That's a pretty good first step. I mean, I I kind of wonder if there's anything more we could say. Uh, for instance, it's hard for me to forget this fake waterfall. Um, the sunset behind them, I suppose, is not fake. It could be. I mean, it could be in a studio. I don't know. Um, but again, the whole nature of the shot, the fact that it's so perfectly framed behind this fake waterfall there uh she is perfectly centered um and of course the people are kind of off to the side there but it's so damn structured right um so let's think about that <clears throat> how to begin that um How does Google not fix that? Anyway, uh, I don't like the keyboard on the laptop I'm using. It's got spaces in between the keys. I don't know how anyone does that, but okay. The scene of the shot itself cannot be understated. Uh, we have to define what we mean here. I don't know how high up in the air it is, which is, um, oh wait, they tell us in the movie. It's like 30 something floors up because the, the receptionist guy says where the party is, uh, which is, uh, 
Okay, that looks like space by now. Why does Google not like? Oh, go to hell. That looks like a man-made waterfall, which is 30-something floors in the air. <coughs> Sorry, I'm trying not to repeat myself. Uh, the fact that it looks like which is 37 floors in the air. Um, slightly better. When I keep saying structured, by the way, what I'm talking about is, uh, as I kind of, the what I highlight about the waterfall, this is man-made. This is not natural. This is not quote-unquote real in the way that, like, you walk into the woods and find a thing that's cool, right? Like, this is something that people put together. Usually when people put something together, it's for a purpose. That can be an explicit pur purpose. It can also be uh, incidental. They may not intend what happens with a thing. The, guy, the people that built Stonehenge, that's man-made. They didn't intend for it to be a tourist trap. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, but now what have we done? Well, we have our earlier idea, which I could have gone farther with, by the way. But we had a little bit of traction there. Uh, you know, viable sexual partners wasn't, wasn't enough. But we said this is like a big part of his masculinity. Okay, that's a good step. But we need more, and there's much more going on in the scene. Now we're talking about this man-made stuff. Uh, she's perfectly centered, all this. The question would be, what do these two things have to do together? It's a little bit like the synthesis exercise I asked you guys to do for the previous paper, right? In this case, you have two ideas which, perhaps on their face, aren't necessarily related Um this tenet of McLean's masculinity, which is an appreciation for the female form, and these man-made structures, these um, uh, I can't, uh, these these constructed things, these made things, uh, artificial. There you go. That's a word. Um, synonym. So you're kind of holding those up next to each other. Do they have anything to do with one another? They may not. They don't always. Okay, I'm not saying that you have to make things work in every case. You know, sometimes ideas just exist next to each other. That's going to happen. To me, though, the fact that these take place not just within the same scene, but that they're simultaneous, right? The structured nature of this shot, the very, very fake, to put it another way, nature of this shot in all the ways that I've described for you, is joined at the hip with McLean's gaze, him noticing her, uh, and it, she's even kind of lit. I, I didn't notice that before. That'd be a good thing. Uh, I'm not going to go back now, but in my paragraph, I should probably point out she's lit. They're not. Like, everything in the scene is saying, like, notice her. Oh, yeah, those people are there, but notice her, right? Like, so it's kind of indicating that that he's probably looking at her, noticing her, too. But again, all of that is joined with the fake waterfall, the sunset, the fake jungle. So it seems to be begging us to consider those two ideas together. At least that's kind of what I'm arguing here. And again, the question becomes, well, so what? What do you do with both of those things together? To me... I mean, the ready-made argument, and that, that actually gives me some pause because ready-made arguments are often uh, not as uh, concrete as you would think. But let's go ahead and do it. Um, let me see, read our last sentence here. Okay, so this... Well, sorry. The... Ugh, I just can't type. 
the artificiality of all this can uh, ably be applied to McLean's um, And more to do with um, what, like, cleaning is at least in this moment. Um, I'm getting a little poetic here at the end, I apologize, but the very Okay, so what have we done now? Well, to review, we started with our evidence, right? goes to about here. Then we just started some pretty easy analysis. Look, I always like to point out to you guys, this first sentence is the first sentence of our analysis. You guys can do this. You're all capable. Like you go back, if you look at that moment and you stop it for a second and you just kind of force yourself to sit with it, what's happening and what is significant? He is pretty clearly, probably, at the very least, noticing this woman. We could all say that. Now the verb is important. I would say it's stronger. I would say he's checking her out. That part's arguable, but we have his earlier actions. Uh, we got more specific, his earlier interactions with women. All of that shows a pattern. This woman kind of, uh, I hate to put it in terms like this, but she kind of she seems like his type um, for different reasons. So he's probably checking her out. Okay, well, what does that mean? And then we, you know, we really just defined what checking someone out is. Yeah, you could all, you're all super capable. I know you could do that. I believe in you for that far, okay? But the problem became, that's not really enough. You know, please don't just argue <clears throat> that McLean occasionally checks out women. Like that's, you know, that's borderline summary, really. Um, so the next question becomes, why are we constantly asked to notice that McLean notices, that McLean checks people out? That's a little bit, harder of a question. You'd have to sit with that. Um, and again, if you can't figure out an answer for that, maybe this, argu this argument isn't for you. Uh, as you're writing your paper, you try something else. And in our case, I was able to come up with something and it's that this must be for us to be made to see this so many times, especially early. Uh, but it goes on through the movie, by the way. Like he, he announces the fact that he sees the the naked picture of that woman when he's like running around being shot at, you know what I'm saying? Like little touches like that. We're, the movie keeps wanting us to know that McLean knows what an attractive woman looks like, right? Or something like that. So it's a big part of his masculinity. It's a big part of what kind of defines this character um, in the movie, at least early. Cause I, I do think that stuff kind of disappears as the movie goes, but cool. That could be enough. Um, I think there's more to the scene, but at the very least, that's decent analysis. Now, what I did is I, I went back to the scene. I went back for more evidence from the very same shot. I didn't go somewhere else. I stayed here, right? We talked about the man-made waterfall, all the man-made stuff. What does that mean with taken in concert with this masculinity? The readily available argument is here at the end that it's kind of, at least, and again, I was very specific. I didn't say all of his masculinity, right? That's silly. 
that's not in this scene. All of McLean's character is not in this one moment, right? We have a single element, so you got to be specific. But the single element we're talking about could be, we're arguing, constructed, right? Man-made, cultural narratives, um, not quote-unquote pure biology. I got really fancy at the end. I, I know I do that, and I apologize. Um, that's an argument. That's a really cool argument that, again, we got from this. That's it. That's all we looked at to do that. And how did we do it? I know I keep saying it. It's details. It's always details. You guys want to gloss a whole scene. You want to talk to me about like 10 minute chunks of the movie. Every time you do that, you're just going to give me summary. You're never going to actually provide analysis because you can't. You can't chew on that much at once. So find specific elements. It can be quotations. You know, a lot of these characters say really interesting things. You can do that or because it's a movie, you can focus on visual cues, the way something is shot, the way something is framed, um, uh, what something is, in this case, again, the man-made waterfall, stuff like that, any of that stuff. It's all there for you, um, but again, you have to be specific. So the last thing we would do, we would need to construct a topic sentence. Um, I mean... You want it to be an argument. That I have that whole formula I gave you guys. You can try to stick to that. You don't always have to, to be honest with you. Um, to me, I'm just going to slap a quick one on here. Uh, if for no other reason, I, I told you the video would be short. And I'm sure I've broken that promise at this point. But something to the effect of... Um, here, start with what our argument is. Certain elements... Look, that's a terrible sentence. Is that our argument? Yes. Is that a great sentence? No. Uh, so we need to be more specific. How do we do that? Certain elements of McLean's masculinity. Ugh. I've already got myself into trouble with the way the sentence is built. But anyway, did Google do that or did I do that? Uh, indicating Your man made structures in the film indicating um, that not all of his behaviors are necessarily. I keep trying not to use the word natural because that's like a loaded word. Um, but they're 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 not necessarily uh, innate. That's maybe that's better. I don't know. You can always play with the phrasing. I'm not a huge fan of this sentence. I'm not a, look as you draft, man. Rough draft. Rough drafts are rough. So this is I'm gonna leave it rough. But what do we have here? We got that topic sentence now. We started with our evidence. We look at look at how long this is. Like you guys are always worried about length. How do we get this long? It's all details. That's all it ever is. I know I say it all the time. That's all it takes, man. If you dig into details, you can you can get a real argument going. Then you can get your topic sentence. That's how you need to build these things. I will um try to think of the best way to get this to you guys. I know I share stuff with you, but I, I worry it's gonna get buried in your inbox. I think I'll actually I'll upload uh this file to Corsten so you can just look at it if you want to refer to something. Of course, it will be in the video as well. Um, I would advise you not to steal this paragraph. Uh, I shouldn't have to say that. Uh, not like you can't write about this moment. I don't mind that. But let's be real. Like, work with stuff you can work with. Work with ideas you can work with. Um, it's going to make your life easier. Um, just trust me on that. Uh, 
what I would say, uh, lastly, and then I'll end the video, right here, I'm interested in this argument. This is really interesting. Um, we're kind of saying McLean maybe isn't, you know, parts of his masculinity aren't natural. To me, that almost necessitates a, another paragraph wherein we think about, well, are there any elements of his masculinity that the film tries to argue are natural? Do you know what I mean? It, it may not. I'm not sure. But it's worth considering. Um, I have a suspicion that there are moments like that in the film. And now the paper I've just started building with this single paragraph seems to be looking at the movie and trying to draw a line between sort of made masculinity, man-made masculinity, which is fun, uh, versus something that's a little more uh, innate, something that's a little less constructed. Uh, you could even think about how masculinity is uh, posed in films, right? Because that's constructed. Anyway, <clears throat> you start heading down a rabbit hole once you build paragraphs like this. That's a good place to be. Um, anyway, I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Uh, be mindful of the syllabus, as always. Uh, I will be mindful of my inbox. I think I have a couple emails from you guys already. I'm about to get into those. I uh, hope everyone had a good weekend. I had a very uh, pretty good time with the boys. Uh, my four-year-old was asking me today when we could go trick-or-treating again, so I got to break that to him. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, hope you guys are well. I'll see you Wednesday. Thank you.